We're up here at the Sealy Lookout just above Coffs Harbour. The reason being we want to check out those hills over there because that's where we're going. The reason I'm standing here in the Coffs region goes back a couple of weeks. You see, we put a post up on Facebook asking for a few of the locals to show us around. We got an overwhelming response, hundreds of people. But there were two whose knowledge of the area and knowledge in general meant that we just had to have them. And I tell you what, it has paid off. These blokes are going to show us coughs like you've never seen before. My advice to you, sit down, grab something cold, make yourself comfortable because this is going to be Coffs Harbour four-wheel drive action style. And trust me when I say, you've never seen anything like it. Epic doesn't even do it justice. If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. Joining me for a trip that I'm sure none of us will ever forget is old mate Sean O in his tough as nails, Dirty 30. Way down the back is Chris from Superior Off-Road. With a wealth of mechanical experience, his skills might just be useful on a trip like this. Of course, Breno needs no introduction. He absolutely loves coughs. The harder, steeper and more extreme, the better. Up front, we've got our two readers who are acting as guides for this trip. Grant in his slick GQ ute and Rowan in his flaming beast of a G60. Starting just north of town, we're tackling tracks that all coughs locals know about and are really the testing ground for anyone heading up here looking for a challenge. A little later in the trip, we're going to head out Ballingen Way to the promised land to cool off. Straight off the blacktop and we're all airing down right away. Back in Coffs, Sean. Back in Coffs Harbour, mate. I love this place. Yeah, you do. It's a bit of a... Uh, it's almost like if you're really into four-wheel drives, this is Sydney four-wheel drive's backyard after the Wadigans. Yeah, that well, makes sense. Look, it doesn't, but I'll tell you what does make sense, mate. This is probably the, the toughest single series of tracks in Australia. And I I I'd, I'd be brave enough to call it the full drop capital of Australia right here. You get no arguments from me. I know who you won't get arguments from. Brenna, you got a copy? Yeah, big fella, how are ya? Mate, Sean and I are up here. We're, we're frothing like dishwashing water, mate. Absolutely loving it. Looking forward to it. Hey, Chris, you got a copy way back there, mate? Yeah, mate, I'm way back here. Well, you get a load of this convoy. Up front, we've got the greatest four-wheel drive ever built, and then behind it, probably the second greatest four-wheel drive ever built. Grant, you got a copy? Yeah, mate, I got you. Thanks for the invite for this weekend, and I'm um, really looking forward to it. Mate, can you, what we're going to ask of you though is just one favour, can you just drive at about half your ability? That'd be fantastic. <laughs> it's not me you need to worry about, Graham. It's, uh, it's Rowan and the old 60, mate. It really shows everyone up. Rowan, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, I got a copy, mate. I learned to drive in a vehicle, I was going to say similar to that, but it was actually nowhere near it. It was a 60, but it wasn't. Uh, it, yours is a bit of a beast, mate. Thanks, mate. It's still a 60 and a half, mate. I'm looking forward to this, boys. What have we got up first there, Grant? Uh, we're just going to tackle the bottom of Commando and just uh, get a feel for it. And then we, we're going to look um, head up to Mount Caramba, which is a, a lovely lookout to have to check out for sure. Commando, it is, eh? Commando. Bring it on. I've got a story about Commando. <laughs> right, let's get into it, boys. I'm amped. Commando's one of the first DVDs I've ever done with full drive action. Yeah. And I nearly rolled the 60, but it was a full body wagon. I literally had 33s on it, and that's it. I nearly rolled it on its side at Commando. I never drove it past the first. Why are you telling me that? I never drove past the first two metres of that track. Why are you telling me these things? things? I, don't want, I don't want to know these things right now, at the base of Commando. Yep. Mm. Well, here we go. Shono's already had one attempt in the past, and he nearly put the 60 on its side. Let's see how he goes in round two. Tell you what, Coffs Harbour. We've just had breakfast, literally just had breakfast. Just finished me bacon and eggs. We've only just stepped off the blacktop. In fact, if you were to turn everything off, sit down and listen, you'd probably hear the trucks on the highway. This right here, it's called Commando. I've got no idea why it's called Commando. I reckon that's a pretty tough name. We'll go with it. I hope it's not called Commando because of the Commando roll. You know what I'm talking about? The boys are having a look. They're picking their lines. I've got nothing more to say than to shake my head. This is Coffs Harbour through and through. You boys confident? Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> Stay, you stay here, mate, and we'll just bring the cars up. I like that. Quiet confidence. Right, right let's get into it. Come on. You're not having a go? No, you're thank you, sir. You're not coming with me? No, thank you, sir. It'll be the smoothest ride you ever had up here. Really? Really, serious. No. no. Still no? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've let a, a, a fellow four-wheel driver down. Something tells me I can still Grant love. needs about zero of my help. 
zero. In fact, I'd probably be a hindrance rather than a help. <laughs> Grant's up first, and he set that GQ up to be low, light, and geared right down. I've seen him in action before, and his approach is calculated and precise. He's gonna eat this. Have a look at that, will you? Oh, you are kidding me. That's insane. That's a tough line. Grant's made that look so easy. Look at that, straight up the hill. He really did make that look like nothing. And this is Commando. Really appreciate your help on that one. No, that's good, mate. I had you all the way. It was... You just got to listen to me a bit more. That's all I'm saying, I'll you know? My... I'll do my best for the next one, mate. Do my best for the next that one. That was ridiculously stable. Come on. What's yeah. the secret? Just slow is the way to go in Coffs Harbour. Yep. Yeah, just keep them low. Lots of uh, off-camber stuff here, so I purposely I was build it say, for that reason. That's what I wanted to touch on. You've purposely built this. It's a low truck. That's a very low truck yep. in comparison to what you see running around town, yeah, for sure. And you're driving everything that's hard at it. Nothing, nothing soft, everything. No, we, we like to challenge ourselves. Don't get me wrong, we, we do winch. Yep. But the um, majority of the time we're able to drive it. So low, slow, and pick a good line. That's the way to go. Watch your spotter. That's it, watch my spotter. <laughs> I did nothing. I yeah, did nothing, I did nothing at all. Right, are we doing the second bit? I'd love to, yeah. Let's get stuck into it. Let's Come get stuck on. into it. Those really are some words of wisdom. If you're chasing super tough terrain, build your truck low and hit the challenges slow. It also helps to be able to pick killer lines like Grant. Nice work, mate. Yeah. Woo, commando done. Rowan, I can hear the big beast start up. You don't miss that in the forest. She sounds like a Mack truck. I'm so keen to see the big G60 in action. Get a look at that beast, will you? Oh, what a line. I'm pretty sure Rowan just picks the hardest lines to have fun. How good is that rig? I got a quick question for you, mate, before you do this. Yeah. yeah. How long you had this bus for? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. So you know it pretty well. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, it didn't show at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, you it, walked up that. It just does its thing, but yeah. you, you, once, point and shoot. once it's locked, it's, yeah. it's point and shoot. Really? Uh, the difference, though, between your drive and Grant, same line, but gee, this thing moved around. You had to really fight it. You had to work at it yeah, yeah, a you lot gotta, more. Yeah, you got to drive it. Yeah. I've, yep. got, I've got to go faster, too. I don't, I don't have gearing? The, the gearing. Yeah. So. Well, I'm impressed so far, mate. I'm going to get up ahead, and I won't spot you. No you don't worries. need it. No. <laughs> no, the car spots itself. I reckon you could pretty much transplant this truck from here, put it into something in America, and it would look just as home. Yep, put a machine gun on the roof and it wouldn't look out of place. That thing is a beast. Super impressive. Here we go, Shawno versus Commando, round two. Yeah, a couple lockers for this one. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I wasn't a little bit apprehensive. I mean, this is big hills, big ruts, big rock steps, and um, this is what the Coffs is really famous for. This is one of the most notorious, I think, tracks in Coffs are. Hey, got a copy? Yeah, here we go. I'm up. Yeah, mate. Mate, you're back here again. You're like an Atlantic salmon. Have another crack. Hey, Commando, you only got, well, you only got that first obstacle last time. I mean, what was a pretty, a pretty standard sort of a truck? How do you reckon you're going to go this time, mate? Well, mate. Look, if I get past that first obstacle, it's all positive. So um, let's hope I get past there, eh? I've got nothing but 100% uh, confidence, mate. I reckon you're gonna eat this for breakfast. It's always good to come back, I reckon, have a crack at something that beat you before, and I think you're gonna kill this. Yeah, cool, mate. I'm gonna bring her up, I think. Let's do it, the dirty 30 to the top. He won't talk to me. Oh, he's nearly killed Dave. Oh, Dave's gone down. <laughs> oh, that was a committing line. Well, that was the first bit. I actually nearly rolled on that bit before. Okay, he's passed the point that beat him last time, and he did so with ease. Whoa, Struth, that is some wheel lift right there. Righto, nice. next up, stage two, the big ruts. Joy, mate, I saw a manoeuvre then that I haven't seen since the 2007 Summer Olympics. You came down, both came up, this wheel came off, whilst this wheel was off the air, the other one came off and you pivoted and came back down. 
two wheels off Perfect you. Landing, mate. Two wheel drive. You're going to walk up this. It's pretty scary though, it's pretty oh, yeah. steep. It is. I mean, you can see here, folks, I'm one of the taller blokes you'll meet, and I'm only just able to look through the windscreen. Oh, you're going wow. to walk up this, mate, you really are. I hope so. This is just going steady. That left line and dump. Left and just walk up it. Yeah. Try not to bounce around too much, that's all. Yeah. You're really you're bouncing heaps, eh? Hey? Just ball, ball, ball. I don't think nothing to do about it, yeah. Control this rubble yeah. on this truck. No, you're good, that was easy. Walked up it. I'll leave you with it. Alright. Righto, next up, stage two, the big ruts. You've got this, bud. This is it, arguably the hardest section on Commando, the crux. Make this and you've knocked the top off it. Yeah, good drive, mate, good drive. Yeah, good line to start, Shono. Now, the big rock step, mate. This is it, the toughest part. Come on, mate. Wow. You alright? Yep. Alright, stay there mate, we'll just get this equalised. You all good in there? You alright mate? Are we sure this vehicle's not going anywhere? No, you not can't. Anywhere, you physically can't. You're up against the bank. Okay. I'm going to take the foot off the brake then. Mate, the wheels aren't even <laughs> on the ground. Wheels aren't on the ground, dude. Okay. The brake's got nothing to do with it. This is probably the most gnarly angle I've ever been on. Yeah, they don't get much more. Oh, they do get gnarly, Sean, eh? Really? Yeah. Fix the diff. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that we... fuel tank that you spoke about. We can get to that leaking dip right real easy now, mate. No, oh, mate, oh, I've got dip oil running all down my legs. Do you want to uh, hop out, Sean, and, and check it out for yourself? But um, your safety towel's not going anywhere. Yeah, I'll take the seatbelt off. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what, lucky I have my seatbelt on. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I don't even know how to get out of here. Just waiting for a mate. <laughs> Jesus. Not a great situation this to be honest with you. I don't think that needs an explanation. My number one, make sure Sean is okay. Number two, let's just everyone calm down. We're gonna make sure we can get the vehicle into a position where it's safe because right now it physically could go back over. So we'll we'll try and we'll try and get it back up onto its wheels or at least stabilize so we can get Sean out and have a look at it. That's the thing. Number one, make sure Sean is okay. Just heard over the UHF. Sean's just put the 60 on its side, I've got no idea what happened. I've just uh, walked down here to get the car. Everything's gone quiet. I didn't hear a single thing. That is not good. Yeah, it is moving. That's the underside of my car. Yep. At least I made it further than last time. You did. You're nearly <laughs> at the top. I know. I know. Third time's a charm, they say. It'll be a ballsy move next time you drive this. Yeah. Well, we've had a bit of a think tank, and this is what we've come up with. We've got um, a winch from Grants going right out to a tree off a, um, off a pulley block to hold the vehicle and hopefully pull it across. We've also got a backup winch, which is Breno's um, Dominator on the GU there. So if anything does happen, which is very unlikely, one of the straps to break or something, we've got a second winch on the vehicle. And I've even got my Dominator out here and secured to a tree up there. So at the end of the day, my vehicle can't go backwards, it can only come across. So um, the plan now is to get it back onto the wheels. Then we'll probably have to pull it back off this bank and position it back in the middle of the track. There is a lot of advanced winching techniques at play here, and it really is a team effort. The key here is to take it slowly and double check everything as well as keeping clear of all straps. Safety first. With the Dirty 30 back on its wheels, we now need to reposition the straps and winches in order to pull the truck off the left bank and back onto the track where it's on some sort of level ground. There is a total of three winches all working simultaneously here. It's like conducting an orchestra. With the 30 now as level as we're going to get it, it's time to call Chris in and make sure the engine is OK to crank over. Having been on its side for quite some time, oil or possibly coolant has moved and could have flown into the cylinders. No oil. That's unusual. We all know that liquid doesn't compress well, so starting an engine with cylinders full of oil will be the last thing that engine does. Um, well, this one's fairly lucky actually. 
um, normally being right hand down, being that the air cleaner's on this side, I'd normally fill up with oil. So we're probably looking at no damage at all, besides the superficial stuff, mm -hmm. which is a win. That's good news. It is. That's what you're saying, we rip these injectors out yep. before you start it, so before any we... oil that's stuck Correct. inside Because what it. will happen, if there's oil inside the inlet, it'll want to fill up the valve, and as the valve comes up, the piston will right. like lock the piston. Yeah, sure. So the piston and valve will meet because of the oil, trying to compress the oil. Diesels need to have glow plugs removed. The Dirty 30 doesn't have any, so direct to the injectors, and each one is removed in turn. The engine is then cranked over, forcing any oil out into the engine bay. That's what that blanket is for, to catch the oil, and make sure that it's free of the cylinders. With Chris now giving the all clear, Sean was able to get the big rig running with a minimum of fuss. That's good work, boys. OK, from here, the general consensus was to winch over the rock step to a small section of level ground. This will give Sean the best chance of continuing under his own steam. It's great to see the old girl back upright, and it's just in the nick of time. A huge storm front is rolling in, and we've now got a limited window to get to the top and off this hill before it all turns to mush. You think Commando is tough in the dry? Try it in the wet. Utterly insane. Grant's twin-locked GQ is doing it easy. He's done this track dozens of times and it shows. Perfect lines and local experience are worth their weight out here. Then of course, there's Rowan in that weapon of a G60. Mate, you are making it look way too easy. Not to be forgotten, Breno in the GU is now up. It's got to be nerve-wracking having seen a mate go over. Game face time, buddy. Come on through, bud. She's yours. Come through, mate. Chris in the D40. Great on the spanners and equally as good behind the wheel. that weather closing in, he's amped to get to the top and he ain't holding back. Far as I'm concerned, it's a ballsy effort to get back behind the wheel after a nasty roll, halfway up a hill like Commando. Big respect, mate. With the rain now starting, now is not a great time to have any issues with the 30. Nup, I take my hat off to you, mate. Big, big effort. Well done, Sean Ape. We'll save the proper celebrations till the pub because some savage weather is rolling in, which could shut this track down. Sean was showing the way, now it's down to Breno and Chris to follow. Woo! Mate, cats and dogs out there, brother. That is one of the ballsiest right. drives I've ever seen. Really? To get back up off the ground. I'll tell you what. Point yourself at a hill that's killed you twice. It has. It has. The first time I, I put it on its side, it should have been a good enough home and yep. as it was, but the second, second time, time I thought I've got this and I didn't, I, I fell on my side and um, I'll tell you what, that wasn't even the hardest bit, it kept going, it was even harder because yeah. I was you've nervous, got, I was scared, I was, yeah. you know, I've dented my pride, my car, and my everything, <laughs> and um, mate, I'm just so happy to be at the top of Commando, Yep. Keep going, eh? I, I don't reckon too many people would have stood up as you did there, so I was never not going to drive it, when you put it on its side, you got to get up you got to go, go right out, I'm getting to the top of this hill, mate, <laughs> let's go, go captain. I tell you what, over the years I've had some pretty intense first days on adventures all around Australia. I'm going to put this one down. Yep, it's the most intense first day of any trip I've ever done. We're going to finish up here, have a look at this view, head into camp. Tell you what, folks, Coffs Harbour, get up here. 
get more Falesset four-wheel drive supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. We're back out in the hills above Coffs and after an epic first day, Coffs locals Grant and Rowan aren't easing up on the tough stuff. But first, we might just be adding one more to the convoy. Hey Grant, got a copy up there? Yeah mate, I got you. You ever bring your, uh, your young bloke out mate? Mate, he absolutely loves it as, uh, as often as I can. He misses out on a lot of night runs, but uh, yeah, during the day we love to get him out on the weekends. You what I'm thinking? Bring it along. What's he, uh, what, what's today, mate? Is it school day? What's the go? He'd still be home, it's only early. Yeah, no, school day today, but yeah, yeah he's, um, he'll be getting ready for school about now, I'd say. What do you reckon? We, uh, we give the little bloke a surprise? Mate, that would be sensational if we could, um, do something with that. He'd just really, really love it. Let's do it. All right, well, lead the way, mate. Let's go past your place. Oh, mate, he's going to be ecstatic with this. All right, yeah, let's go get him. I'm excited. Introducing Grant's young bloke, Danger. He's a massive four-wheel drive action fan. In fact, he watches the DVDs every night before bed. Good on you, mate. He helps Grant work on his GQ and he can crack a mean whip to boot. Excuse me, are you Danger? Do you know who I am? I am. Can I shake your hand, mate? How are you, buddy? Hey, listen, what do you got planned for today? You gotta go to school? You gotta go to school. What do you reckon we just say no to school? Go four-wheel driving. You reckon? Oh, Give me yeah. five. Yeah! yeah. 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 Finally got someone to go four-drone the same height, mate. I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. What do you reckon? Can we go? Let's yeah? do it, eh? Alright, let's go. Let's start. with Dad, let's go. And just like that, a day off school, out four-wheel driving. How good is that? I just hope Danger's teacher isn't watching. With our convoy complete, we head back into the hills. That's the great thing about Coffs. Tracks are so close. Grant and Rowan have promised us one of the single best water holes in the region. Only catch is, it's a little tough to get to. This just dead set drops away off the edge of the earth, I think, boys. Look how steep that is down there. Yeah, we can see the, uh, the dip in the G60 in front of us here. Going down? Going down. Lockers. No, lockers going up, not going down. You just want to use lockers all the time. Just in case. Oh, just in case. Oh, no, no, not yet. Well, I'll use them a bit later. Radio, right, guys, here we go. This is one heck of a steep descent. It's all about engine braking here. First gear low, feet off the brake pedal, and let compression slow you down. Concentrate instead on picking a good line. This is a nice little downhill section. This is nice. Don't speak too soon, Sean Ain. Now that is a slide. Whoa, Sean is getting pretty good at slide. First gear, lower aims, let's try not to hit that stump on the left there. That GU is just such a capable bit of kit. I love it. Beautiful. You know a track's steep when your uh, seatbelt locked on. Chris has done a lot of work on his D40 and it really shows on hills like this. Nice drive, mate. Hey, Grant, get a copy? Yeah, Grant, go yeah. Mate, all these rivers here, like the one on our right-hand side, are any of these got any decent swimming or any... I don't know, can you access them? Can you get anywhere and swim? Hey, just up the road up here we've actually got two swimming holes. There's a bit of a group there at the last one, so we'll, you might pull up the one that's got a little bit of a jump off, though, Dave. 
Oh yeah. Well, we're only 15 minutes out of the CBD and cost. I've been here a couple of times now. It's a bit of a hidden secret, only the locals know about it. It is absolutely freezing cold, and I'm going in! Yeah! Well, we're nice and refreshed after that swim, and now we're heading into the rainforest for possibly the most Breno-friendly hill we've ever seen. Have a look at this. Oh. Coffs has such a variety of terrain. Steep shale one minute, rock steps the next, then around the corner, thick rainforest and crystal clear streams. It's a good idea that you prep your rig for anything, because that's exactly what you might encounter out the back of Coffs. Oh, that's a cool little track. That's nice. Now that little camera's still going there. Is it? Yeah. We're gonna hit it's really good. No, 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 it's good. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mr. Cameraman. I owe you one GoPro. <laughs> Whoops. Breno next, and we can expect a gnarly line here. That's a good drive, mate. Perfect throttle control. This is a beaut bit of rainforest, but it's almost time to head to camp. The way out, however, is a hill the boys have been talking about all day. Even Breno is shocked. What do you reckon? What's the, what's the technique here? Attempted. What would you do with your, your remote control car? Like, I would drive it up the middle. Oh, yeah, the middle line. Turn it down into the left. Ooh, that's oh, slippery line. It's a ballsy line. And then, I'll turn it in and then turn both ways at the exact same time. I think you've got it. Yeah. That's I'm, it. I'm That's taking up. that exact line. Oh, I'm doing that one too. <laughs> We're most definitely going to need the lockers for this one. <laughs> How much does Danger love this? So good to see. That fire. What just happened then? That fat fire is what it did. That was killer. Wow. Uh, that was great. Let's hit a T60. Come on. Let's see what the Come on. Go, bring the big Let's give it a go, the poor old girl. <laughs> That G60 is pure animal. <laughs> so close, Shawno, so close. I think there's just too much weight in the back, mate. Let's winch, eh? Mate, the idea behind this little setup, of course, is to get 16 tonne of G60 up the front, which is going to act as an anchor point, and of course we've got a secondary anchor point here in the GQ, and the reason we're taking these measures is twofold. Firstly, that hill is remarkably steep, and secondly, the Daddy 30, despite being only half a four-wheel drive, weighs more than about four four-wheel drives. So we're going to double line pull off the back of the GQ as well. These are just anchor vehicles, and primarily in this country here, I mean, it's just so slippery, we'll pull one vehicle back, no problem at all. So hopefully with two, we've got a bit of a chance. <laughs> Give it the berries. Righto, this should be good. This is a spot for this one to be. Right there. Yeah. 
grenade, you sir are a weapon. That was a tactic that I like to call um, third gear low range. <laughs> Chris, so close, buddy. That was a good drive. We've been given the keys to a private property with a perfect campsite overlooking the Coffs Coast, directly above a banana plantation. Makes sense to go grab a bunch, given the monkeys I'm travelling with. Yep. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Really do. Mate, I'll tell you what, I know a thing or two about bananas, and those suckers are green. You can't eat them. Can't eat those, mate. Right. But Cole was good enough to give us some real ripe ones. Yep. And um, they're the ones I'm going to call it dessert tonight. Dessert? Mm. What are you going to do? Banana fritters. They're going to be the Sean way because I don't know if I've got all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to make it work. Dude, I've had your curry sausages about 18 times now, and every single time you haven't had all the ingredients. No, but they still, come out, they still come out though. We have not had sausages once. <laughs> <laughs> I still made them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the key. It was you curry. Persevere what you got, mate. And I've got the best bananas in Australia right now. That's not a bad key ingredient to so banana fritters. <laughs> fritters will go well. Ruddle, fritters ruddle. So we've got, we've got chicken farmer a la rag style over here. Breno. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Breno. Breno. That's, that's bound oh, to be good. No. You've got your deep fried banana gristle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fritters. What are you bringing to the table? Yeah. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> you know we got those bananas today? Yep. I've got a bunch of ripe ones off coal. You did. And I've got to do something with them. I can't just leave them go to waste. No. They're too nice for that. Look at that. So what I'm going to do Yes. Some banana fritters for dessert. Banana fritters? I'm going to cook them. Well, do you need a set of tongs? The problem was I didn't have all the ingredients right, so I've done what I usually do and just make stuff up on the fly. Yeah, it's something I admire about you. So that. Look at that. That is a. Look at that. Put that straight in the hot oil. Really are. Should we want to turn around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. There's an old rule that says you can't put bananas on your boat. That's correct. Now, what's that about, mate? It's the only superstition I have. So you believe that? I do. Big Why? Time. Why? Because, um, Give Mate, I don't, need, I don't need any bad luck when I fish, right? No, you don't. I've got, I usually take it with me wherever I go, so I don't need anything else that could have contribute to okay. my bad luck. But that is an old thing. It is an old saying. Yeah. And yeah, I know yeah. a mate who actually had bananas in his boat just once, just back up and he rolled, his, he's rolled his boat in the bar. He's rolled his boat, so you've got a lot in common with him. Yeah, I've got, rolled everything <laughs> but my boat, to be honest. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do you reckon these are done? These ones these don't need much longer? These are done. All right. Yeah, I bet I'll jack some Pollock on it. <laughs> That's bloody nice. Look at that. Have you got four? Here it is. Here it is. Here we go. Come on, mate. Oh, is Come that on. good? That batter is unbelievable. Really? Absolutely spot on. Wow. How golden is it? Can you have a go at this? In all seriousness, folks, I tell you what, we've had one heck of a meal tonight. We've had uh, we've had the old chicken parmigiana um, Breno style, and uh, and now we've had uh, Shawno's Shawno's Shawno. Oh. Shawno's uh, bananas in custard, and I tell you what, neither one has looked terribly appetising, but they've both tasted remarkably good. And I tell you, I've got to say, if I was served that up in a restaurant, I would think I had really won the lottery. That just looks, looks fantastic. Great. Looks great. You've done a great job, mate. I'll cheers to that. No, cheers, Let's mate. Go. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course, you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter, you get more for less.
damn hard to sleep in with a bunch of blokes cracking whips next to your swag. Thanks, boys. Still, who'd want to sleep with another day on the Coffs tracks? Let's get into it. Seen the movie Deliverance? That's all. That's an old one, mate. Yeah, I saw that a long time ago. Does this track remind you of anything, mate? Yeah, it does a bit, mate. This is a beautiful Bellingham Valley. Have a go at the water here, mate. I reckon it comes through a great big industrial purifier before it comes down here. You do it for the tourists, don't you? Yeah, mate. Well, you can bottle this, and uh, it'd be better than stuff you buy the survey. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. That is just a stunning little river. Did it get busy down here, mate? It's just a bit of a hidden hot spot. Where we are now is um, yeah, it doesn't get too busy here. Um, Back in the promised land, which everyone will probably know about, it gets pretty busy on weekends, but out here you're sort of on your own, like last night's camp spot, all by yourself. Well, I'm sold, mate. I'm absolutely sold. Look at that. That is just stunning. Yeah, well, hopefully we get a swimming soon. That'd be nice. Felt that water on. <laughs> it's freezing. Come oh, on, mate. Man up. You'll be right. <laughs> Damn it. He called that card. <laughs> And who can argue with a bloke that drives a tank for a four-wheel drive? <laughs> man up indeed. The Bellingen State Forest is an untouched paradise of virgin rainforests and crystal clear creeks. It's even better than it looks. How good does that look? I've just seen a fish, so no one's allowed to swim until I have a quick cast because <laughs> you can wait, you can sit on the rock, you can't swim until I catch a fish. This is, what a year or while. this is what travelling with Shauno is all about. You pretty much, some, some people go by times of day when they can eat, sleep, all those, all those basic things with Shauno. It's about when we can fish. I've got no problem with that. Well, there he is. That's either a perch or a bass or a... Barracuda Mundi, I'm not sure, mate, but I'm going to try and catch it. Shauno, can't take him anywhere. That bloke was born with fins, I reckon. OK, mate, come on, that's enough. Can we swim yet? Guys, we can go swimming. <laughs> I'm thinking on a rating between very cold and extremely cold, it's right up there with extremely cold. Um, I'm only worried about getting wet, to be honest. Oh, he's like coming in, it's not absolutely freezing at all. Yep! Yeah! 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 I just can't convey how cold that was. That is like... It's like water you would just get out of the fridge and pour on yourself. It's absolutely freezing. Did you just do the ice bucket challenge? Yeah, I've done the ice bucket challenge. That one's in style. Woo! Go out the dirty 30, mate. It's probably a good idea, though. Not having a go, just um, prevention is the best uh, form of attack. Yeah, look, I, I'm going to stuck between a hard rock and a hard place here, mate. I agree with you, but I got Shauno's got a mean left hand hooker. I don't want to <laughs> anger him, so yeah, we'll pull over, mate. That sounds like a good plan. I no. better check that list up behind the wheel with that GU as well. Ain't no safety plan going to help that, mate. 10 for that one. I resemble that remark, bloke. In all seriousness though, a 20 point safety check is a damn good bit of insurance. She's looking good, bud. Yeah, mate, we're getting there. Boys we're getting there. there. Hey, 
Hey. Some uh, roadside repairs, mate. The old radiator's loose. Oh, hey. too. Oh, loose. That's a good pickup. Yeah. Well, just rattled. We're rattled. lucky that it, the fan didn't go through it and cause us all sorts of dramas. I'll tell you what, though. You pick up something simple like that, for free especially, yeah, it'll right. save you a hell of a lot of money down the Definitely. track. I mean, like you said, if a fan goes through the radiator or something like that, that's big dollars. Stuck in the middle of nowhere, you, you know, you're going to have a costly, costly bill on a tow truck. How much you got to do here? We're right to go. Ready to go? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's All right. go. Back on the tracks, eh? With Chris giving us all a tick of approval, we were back on the tracks. Alright, yeah. Both lockers or one? Both. Both. Put it in there. Let's do it. No mucking around. Best little co-driver any bloke could ask for. Something tells me that Danger ain't gonna own a two-wheel drive when he gets his license. The last time Rowan and Grant were out this way on Rocky Track, they had to help out another poor bloke who had just rolled his truck. Coughs, tough as it gets, but Grant makes it look easy. Well, this is one of the more popular tracks around Coffs, pretty notorious too. It's called Rocky. There's actually a couple of names for it. There's a bit of discussion over what you should call it. It could be called Rover, it could be called Rocky. I'm going to stick with Rocky because there's great big rock right here. I like the look of it. Probably this would be the pinch, the little, the little tough part on the track. Uh, we had to recover the camera car from here, the big 80. Um, Bruno drove it like an absolute madman, but just unlocked, didn't quite make it up. Um, I've seen Grant go up it. And as everything Grant's done this trip so far, it looked like he was going to pick up a pizza from Pizza Hut. Just no big deal. I have a feeling though, this next line could be very spectacular. I'm going to see how we go here, but I'm looking forward to watching the boys come up this. Should be good fun. We're going to drive the rock on Rocky, then we're going to rove up and over rover. Stick with me. Clear as mud. Righto, bring up the G60. <laughs> yeah, a seatbelt might be a good idea, Rowan. Now that was a tough line, but Rowan made it look like a curb in a shopping centre car park. Alright, let's go, eh? I had a bit of fun driving the camera truck up here. Uh, the patrol should do it a lot easier. I tell you what, I don't envy Sean right now. I've been in a situation that's not as bad of a role, in, not anywhere near as bad of a role as Sean had, but I do know how much it shakes your confidence. So full credit to the bloke for getting back up, dusting himself off and going back out and hitting some more tracks. Um, I, you could not blame him for a single second for taking this one easy, because um, I know I'd be taking it easy. I'll tell you what, I say if you fall off the horse, you've got to get straight back on it, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Now, yes, I roll the vehicle in coughs and um, I roll this vehicle. Today, I'm um, going to get back on that horse and um, drive these tracks. They're all the same sort of tracks up here in coughs. They're all steep, they're rutted, and um, each one a little bit more gnarly than the next, unfortunately. What? You're going over. No, I wasn't. Really? You can't you try that again. You want to winch it? It'll just be a disaster. I thought, I thought it was going to all happen again then. Put a winch on it. Put a winch on it. Good call, mate. Good call. Safety first. All hands on deck. Let's get this done. That's actually, that's a good line yeah, to come out of there. Yeah. If we don't make this, mate, I'm going to build a ramp with those mag tracks that we did last time. Mm -hmm. up, this, up this hole you're in. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yep. Nice. 
nice. Tell you what, that was a pretty ballsy drive on Sean's behalf. He's been through the ring of the poor bloke. And that was a pretty gnarly angle. Big winch job as well, but many hands, lots of eyes. Got him up piece of pie. That was a bit heart and mouth. That was almost a repetition of the other day. That was a little bit scary. I um, I think Sean's heart was in his mouth. I'm gonna go get the patrol and give it a go. Hey, Graham. Yep, I've got you, mate. Bring her up, Breno. Epic drive, Breno. That was classic, mate. Oh, that's hard in now. That's ball driving. That is something else. <laughs> that D40 impresses me nearly as much as Chris behind the wheel. So I got the chance to have a ride in the G60, and this is what I got. Soft tops. They really put you in touch with your environment. <laughs> Epic. Best fun as you can have with your clothes on. This is an old logging area with a maze of tracks. Oh yeah, alright. The logging being done out here around our state forest, mate, that's a, there's a lot of it right around the top, isn't there? Yeah, we still got a fair bit of logging down in Cox and up in the Yulong area. Yeah, I noticed even the other day when we were sort of north of it, there's um, there's a lot of it being done right through the state forest. I guess the good thing about that is that um, they maintain a lot of the tracks, so they've got to get the logging trucks through, which means that you can go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Breno, you yeah, they're, they're always logging, they're always looking after the tracks, which obviously looks after us. So, good and bad in some people's eyes, but it's got to be done, I suppose. We're pretty high. Yeah. Time for one last short, steep, rutted climb. Coffs just doesn't give up. It's gnarly right to the end. No, that is some wheel lift, mate. Two wheelies? That's a good amount of wheelies. Chris, that was a clean line. Well driven, mate. Wow, what an absolutely amazing adventure. I don't think any of us will ever forget this trip. Big thanks to Sean and Breno for providing the entertainment. And also, huge thanks to Chris for picking up the pieces and keeping us all on our wheels and making sure we can continue day after day. I really want to say a big heartfelt thanks to, of course, Rowan and Grant for bringing us out here and showing us not only these tough tracks, but places like this and little danger. 
Something tells me we've got to keep an eye on that bloke. I reckon he's going to be on another four-wheel drive action DVD one day, showing up whoever it is. He could even be me. He might even be presenting, but I tell you what, he'll drive better than I do. Now, let's put an argument to rest once and for all. Coffs Harbour has the greatest number of tough tracks anywhere in Australia. That's it. Done and dusted, without a doubt. But to be able to come down here and contrast all those tough tracks with a place like this, crystal clear streams, beautiful camping, I tell you what, Coffs has really grown on me. I'll be back absolutely for sure. Maybe you'll see me here, maybe even be on this rock, maybe you won't. But you'll definitely see me next time on Four Wheel Drive Action. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan Storage Drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros and SUVs with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. 
A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps, and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries, though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient, and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top, and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire, or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. 
It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down to with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. Introducing the insane new Adventure Kings nine inch lethal LED driving lights. These things have an amazing combination of both spot and flood light. They have 21,840 lab proven effective lumens per pair. That's over 2,000 more than the previous generation. Plus they have huge light distance performance with one lux at over 1.3 kilometers. These are the LED driving lights that other lights wish they were. You asked and we listened. You said you wanted even more flood of light out of your LED driving lights to light up the sides of the road, the highway and the tracks. We went back to the drawing board to redesign the lethal LED driving lights to produce exactly that. At the same time, we upgraded the lights to the ridiculously tough King's laser light die cast aluminium housings and three millimeter folded steel mounts. So not only are these some of the brightest LED driving lights we've ever sold, but they're also the toughest. How bright? Try a lab proven 21,840 lumens per pair and one lux of 1,342 meters. That's real world lumens too, not the theoretical lumens that some lights claim they produce. That's thanks to the genuine German designed Osram LEDs for simply unparalleled light performance. We've also re-engineered the lethal lights with a new 5,185 Kelvin color temperature. That means they're just a little bit more on the softer, warmer side. Still a clear, crisp white light, but that little bit easier on the eyes when driving long distances. And of course, you get all the features and quality you'd expect from Adventure King's driving lights, like polycarbonate lenses, the same stuff riot shields and fighter jet canopies are made of, and an IP68 water and dustproof rating, meaning these lights are waterproof to a depth of a meter for an hour. Plus, for the first time ever, they're rated to IP69K. That means they can withstand high pressure jets of hot water. That tough die cast alloy housing features passive cooling fins and a waterproof breather for longevity. And they have the ability to run on both 12 and 24 volt, meaning they're suitable for everything from cars and four wheel drives to trucks and machinery. Including the brackets, they measure 250 millimeters high, 230 millimeters wide, and 115 millimeters deep. They have an attachment system that uses two eight millimeter bolts on either side to positively lock them in place and prevent them from falling out of alignment. And of course, they use the same plug as all previous Adventure Kings lights, which makes them an easy 10 minute upgrade. Just unplug your old lights, bolt the new ones on, plug them in and you're ready to go. Add in a two year warranty and you've got a simply incredible set of lights that leave the competition looking a little underwhelming. The Adventure Kings 9 inch lethal LED driving lights are the best value LED driving lights on the market. We've re-engineered them to be incredibly tough and incredibly bright. They'll turn night into day and they're on sale right now for a price you have to see to believe. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. 
Now it's even tougher. With upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM. And an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.